What's happening guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we are going to look at the August 9th edition of Impact, a great show top to bottom, two matches that were main event worthy, and a show that built toward next week, which should be another fantastic show. So we open the show with LAX and the OGs fighting backstage, no commentary in this, so it didn't seem like it was a part of the show, real nice touch, um, these guys beat the crap out of each other, much like they always do. Uh, this almost ended very poorly for Santana when Hernandez was going to throw him over a flight of stairs. However, there were people coming in that broke it up. Uh, the OGs ended up beating these people up. I don't know if it was a mix of security guards and just random people in the Rebel. Uh, but one did suffer the unfortunate fate of getting powerbombed into a wall by Hernandez. That did not look pretty. Good opening segment, and that brought us to our first match of the evening with the Desi Hit Squad versus Petey Williams and Ishimori. Um, this happened because of what took place a couple weeks ago when the Desi Hit Squad ended up attacking Williams and Ishimori after their one-on-one -on -one match. I thought this was probably the Desi Hit Squad's best-looking match so far. Um, I think they matched up really well with Petey Williams and Ishimori. Uh, they were able to keep up the pace. Um, the face team started off really strong getting the crowd into it, and that was quickly derailed by the hit squad. You know, they just slowed the match down, isolated Petey Williams, doing exactly what good heels are supposed to do. Um, however, hot tag is made. Uh, Ishimura ends up hit hitting Rohit Raju with a drop kick into the corner. Petey Williams hits him with a Canadian Destroyer, and then Ishimori hits the bloody cross for the win. So, good match to open the show. Um... Surprised the Desi Hit Squad took their first loss here. However, maybe it will build to something bigger with uh, Gama being very dissatisfied with the outcome of the match. And you could see that after the match took place. Um, he was yelling at them right afterward. So I wonder if they're going to do something there. But good way to open the show. Then we got a Pentagon promo hyping his match with Matt Seidel later on in the evening. Uh, he says that Matt may have three eyes, but he has zero fear. Um, I really like that they have him cut the promo in Spanish, and then it's just translated in subtitles in English. Good stuff there. Um, then Alicia interviews Allie and Kiara Hogan backstage. Uh, Alicia says Allie pinned the Knockouts champion last week. However, her win was ruined by Tessa Blanchard. Uh, Allie says that Tessa will eventually get hers. Uh, she says, however, her focus right now is on Sue Young, and uh, she challenges Sue to a match next week. She doesn't care if the title's on the line or not. We find out later on in the evening that it will be a non-title match, and Kiara pipes up and adds in that, or tells Sue Young to bring her undead maid of honor and then invites Tessa as well. Uh, we go to ringside, and Don and Josh hype the rest of the show from the commentator's table. Uh, it was actually a little hard to hear what they were saying because of how loud the crowd was. This was great for Impact. I like that they went to the recording of the commentary while they were recording the show rather than it being taped over. I think that adds a lot of value to the show, and uh, it's much better than the green screen they did backstage. So I'm glad we're moving away from that. This is definitely the right route to go. Um, it just seems much more natural. Like, you could tell at points in the show when they edited footage. Um, I think it was one point when they came back from commercial and you could hear Josh say something. And it was just it just stuck out that you knew they edited that over. But it really helped with the crowd and things like that. You could actually hear them. Um, let's see. Uh, Alicia interviews Austin Aries backstage. And Aries says he has known Eddie Edwards for 10-plus years. However, this isn't the same Edwards he once knew. However, he does wish it was the old Eddie Edwards because he's good, but Aries is better. Uh, he says this new Edwards is unpredictable and actually has Aries a little worried. He says, however, Aries is the world champion and he will come out on top. Uh, we see backstage Grado talking with Joe Hendry and Katarina. Uh, he was wondering what was going on last week between the two of them. And then he wonders why he can't beat Eli Drake one-on-one, -on -one, which Katarina pipes in. Well, Joe beat him. And then Joe kind of says, you know, I'm going to protect you, Grado, like I did when we were growing up. And then he's going to face Eli Drake next week, which should be a great match. Interested to see where they go there, if this thing actually turns a corner with Grado in them. But 
we will have to wait till next week to find out. Then we have Alicia Edwards versus Tessa Blanchard. Um, Alicia got her ass kicked for most of the match. I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did. I figured they were going to do some sort of squash match. However, Alicia did get some offense in here and there. I mean, Tessa started off really strong. She press slammed her and just beating the crap out of her, getting a handful of near falls, obviously starting to get frustrated. Uh, Alicia was able to get some offense, uh, hitting a tilt world DDT, getting a near fall. But Tessa eventually puts her away with the hammerlock DDT. She grabs the microphone and tells Allie that she may have everyone fooled, but she does not have Tessa fooled. Um, she says she knows Allie's intentions and that she only cares about herself and the Knockouts Championship. And then she says if Allie is going after the Knockouts Championship, then Tessa is going after Allie. So they actually have a triple threat match booked for the next set of tapings between Sue, Allie, and Tessa Blanchard, which I'll talk about some more of those matches on this week's Impact Report, which should air Sunday. Uh, then Matt Seidel gets interviewed by Alicia. Matt Seidel says he may have lost the title, but he still has the spirit of the X Division champion. He says with everyone tuned in on the match between him and Pentagon tonight, he can open everyone's third eye. Then we get another Jericho Cruz advertisement, and that leads us to the GWN flashback, which is Chris Saban versus PD Williams. And uh, I believe Chris Saban got his ass kicked by Kevin Nash afterward. So we head backstage, and Falaba and KM are talking. KM wants to know what happened last week. They kind of go back and forth. And then at this point, we see Scarlett walk through, and she says, Looking good, boys. And obviously, this stops them dead in their tracks. Uh, so we see some guy randomly step into management's office. He was getting yelled at for barging in. And then he leaves, and all of a sudden, Scarlet comes in. And she walks up, and, you know, obviously they're all frazzled and excited. And she says, since she's gotten here, all the girls have been mean to her, and she doesn't feel comfortable getting in the ring with them. She wants to know what management can do for her. So they decide to make a show. And it is obviously called The Smoke Show. Uh, they had originally called it, like, Paradise Island or something like that, and that got vetoed, and this will debut next week, so this is very interesting. I like that they mentioned why she wouldn't get in the ring with the other women. It's definitely an interesting way they're going about it, but it's got me interested, so I like that there, and uh, we will see what happens next week. So at this point, we hit the 9 o'clock hour, and we get the Matt Seidel versus Pentagon Jr. match. This could have easily main-evented the show. Very good stuff from both of these men. Back and forth to start off. Pentagon gets some early offense. However, Matt Seidel has done what he's been doing recently. He goes to work on a body part, this one being Pentagon's left knee. So... He kind of focuses on the knee for a good portion of the match here and there. Uh, Pentagon hits some sling blades. Seidel rolls out of the ring to collect himself. He goes under the ring. Pentagon follows him. They play a little cat and mouse. Seidel goes back to work on the knees. Um, he controls on the outside for a while. They go back in the ring. Pentagon hits a lung blower in the corner. He goes to break his arm. However, Seidel gets out. He goes back, work, back to work on the knee. Um, they go back and forth. Pentagon hits a Pentagon driver. However, Matt Seidel kicks out at two. They go back and forth. Seidel goes for a shooting star press. Pentagon gets the knees up, I believe. And then Pentagon hits the package pile driver for the win. Great match between both men. And uh, yeah, good stuff. So then we get OVE coming up on the screen, the Titantron, whatever you want to call it, while Pentagon Jr. is still in the ring. And Sammy is obviously tired of losing, looking like a freak, you know, the usual stuff he's been talking about the last couple weeks. Uh, he says to the Chris that one of them is going to shave their head tonight. Uh, obviously, neither of them want to do it. Both of them have hair. Um, Jake eventually gives in, sits down in the chair. Sammy looks at Dave and says, no, you're going to be the one to get your head shaved. So he makes J Jake shave Dave's head. And then Sammy finishes by saying we're going to look more like a family. So good stuff here. I enjoyed that. Um, and more of it. Let's let's keep it going. I, it seems like they're going to build OV into some sort of cult. Like I said, I think they should start adding some more members, make this a big thing. So then we have LAX come out. And Conan says they want to finish what they started with the OGs earlier on. 
King and the OG show up at this point on the balcony looking down. So they have this confrontation. However, the OGs are up top. LAX is in the ring. Uh, Conan calls King the, once again, walking, talking glory hole. The chant erupts. Um, King tells LAX that they may have won the battle, but they didn't win the war. And he's tired of being this, or of this trying to be settled in the ring. And he challenges them to bring it to the streets. Conan says that he brought up King and the OGs, and there is only one group that runs the streets, and that is LAX. We learn later on in the show that it will be LAX versus the OGs next week. So good stuff there. And then we have Jimmy Jacobs talking about, I guess he cut a promo backstage, talking about the whole Johnny Impact and Congo Kong feud. And he says, Johnny, you asked for the monster. You've got the monster. However... I am the monster. So we will get Jimmy Jacobs versus Johnny Impact next week. That should be interesting. Um, and that brings us to the main event. Austin Aries versus Eddie Edwards. This match was a lot of fun. It was good competition, a lot of shenanigans, and Eddie Edwards is a crazy son of a bitch. Um, yeah, th so they start off the match battling back and forth. Edwards hits a belly-to-belly -belly overhead suplex, and then he starts doing snow angels in the ring. Aries is, you know, what the hell is going on? So he does this throughout the entire match of being a crazy son of a bitch, and Aries is selling the hell out of everything. So that that was just great on great parts on both for both men. Um, we did see one point where I think Aries chopped uh, Eddie Edwards, and Eddie Edwards pulls down his shirt and asking for more, going like this. Good stuff. Um, they get a bunch of hand, handful of near falls. Uh, Aries at one point has the last chancery locked in it, to which Eddie Edwards starts biting Austin Aries' fingers. And, you know, that that's just a great thing in general because, I mean, if I was locked in that move, I would definitely think to bite his fingers too. Um, so, obviously, we get shenanigans here. Uh, Aries brought the belt in, gave it to the ref. The ref goes to bring the belt back. Aries goes for a low blow. However, Edwards ends up hitting a low blow of his own, tries to roll up Aries for a two count. Um, ref ends up getting knocked down at one point. Edwards goes, grabs the kendo stick, hits the referee first with it, then ends up hitting Aries. Uh, he starts to choke Aries out with it in the turnbuckle, and all of a sudden Aries is flailing his arms, kind of like waving somebody out. All of a sudden we see Killer Cross come down the, down the ramp, he comes in the ring, hits Eddie Edwards with a Saito suplex. Aries hits the Brain Buster and retains his title. At this point, Killer Cross pulls out his signature card, throws it onto Eddie Edwards' chest. Eddie, uh, Eddie Edwards obviously gets kicked out of the ring. Cross and Aries stand tall in the ring. So, like I said last week, I wonder if Aries has hired Killer Cross. It seems like there is definitely some sort of mutual agreement going on between both men. I really like it. I, perfect role for Killer Cross. Gets him on TV, doing something. I'm guessing we're probably going to get Killer Cross and Eddie Edwards, which should be fantastic. This will be Cross's first big feud in Impact. Um, so great stuff there. I really enjoyed the show. Um, another easy watch, like they are every week. And it, we built to what should be a great show next week. We have LAX versus the OGs. Uh, Eli Drake versus Joe Hendry, uh, Ali versus Sue Young, and I know there's some other stuff in there too, but good stuff here. I enjoyed the show. I hope you guys did. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comment section below, along with what you thought of the show. Um, that's really all I have for you guys today. I will see you guys back on Sunday for the Impact Report, and until then, thanks for checking out my video, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.